In this video, I'd like to take a look at the records window. This is essentially a list of all the records in your file which you can use to filter, search and to jump around and also to take a quick view of your data. To get there, there are a couple of different ways. You can either simply click on the barrel here or you can go view, record lists and then pick the list that you want to see from the list. So if we go to individuals, we'll get the individual list which will show all the individuals in your file. As of version 6, we now have a filter at the top which allows us to subset the records very easily. And what we can do is to simply type in the surname and you'll immediately see all the people with the surname of Munro. And we can subset that again and we can type in Ant. So what we can see here is it's not only picking up Anthony at the beginning of the four names, it's also picking it up in the centre, which can be very useful when searching for information. The other useful tip that I can give is when you load Family Historian 6 for the first time, you'll find that there is a set of options under this button, and the first one is not ticked. What this one effectively does is allow you to search using Munro as a surname for women whose name you've actually got down as their maiden name, which is the normal way of recording the information. So what I can do here, I can tick includes husband surnames and if I change this to be CA, you'll see we've now got a Reardon and a Fisher because they are actually married to Munro's. You've also got the option to jump straight to a record ID if you want and you've also got the ability, as you've always had, to be able to sort by any of the visual columns on that list. So if I want to sort by record ID, I can simply click on the record ID. If I want to search by sort by updated date, I can simply click on the updated date. And in all cases, if I click and hold down the Alt key, they've reversed so you can see the oldest records are now at the top of the list and the newest records at the bottom. The final option you can do here is you can click on the little pluses. So if I click here, you can drill down and see the individual's information and their husband and their children and in actual fact you can keep drilling down on this list for as many times as you want until you or until you run out of information. You can also, of course, just double click to get the property box up. And in my case, my property box floats over the top. The final thing you can do is you can customize these columns to suit your purposes. So for instance, I might find it useful to be able to see on an individual line who Carrie Ann is married to. And I can do that very simply. I can go up, right click, say I want to configure the columns. If I scroll down my list, go down to other and add a row and then click on the data reference. I can come in here, scroll down my list to find spouse, click OK, say this is the spouse. Click add and I've now got a new column which I can then move up my list. I might say, well, I don't want it up there, I want it under birthplace, so I can just use these little arrows to move it around. Click OK, and you'll see I've got a new column with the spouse of the person I'm looking at. So as you can see, this is a very useful window. You can also view sources in the same way. Again, you can filter them. You can filter them here by title, author or type. You can also do the same with repositories and media. And what you'll find if you go to Tools Preferences and go to Records List, Records Window here, you can control what options you normally see. So if you never use submissions or submissions, you can turn those off. If you want to show media, you can turn those on. And if you want to show families, you can just alt say Always Show. Click Apply. See, I've now got a Families tab, and I can click OK. 
So that's a very quick introduction to the records window.